we've got a submission here from Bloxa. What? This is not a live stream. I know, right? Uh, I was supposed to do this in the last live stream, and the file that was submitted, the video file, was it wouldn't open in Blackbox Log Viewer. So I set it to transcode using WinFF, and I went on to the next one, and I forgot to go back. <laughs> so I actually skipped over Bloxa. Sorry about that. So I'm going to do a follow-up here so uh, they don't have to wait until the next live stream, whenever that might be. So let's do an old-fashioned non-live stream version of a black box log analysis. Bloxa says, uh, I couldn't for the life of me find a way to make the black box overlay on the video. And I'm just gonna, I know some of you have heard me say this already, but I'm just gonna repeat just so anybody who's hearing it for the first time knows. Don't send me a, a video with a pre-rendered overlay, please. That does, just gets in the way. All I need is the black box log in the video. It's literally no problem at all for me to uh, put the black box log on top of the video. And then I can see whatever I think is relevant instead of what the pre-rendered overlay thinks is relevant. So. The issue that we're trying to deal with, free from oscillations, but experiencing some prop wash, uh, don't get that locked in feel. Uh, locked in feeling, uh, so if you go back far enough, the software itself was the limitation on the quote unquote locked in feeling. In other words, if you go back to clean flight like 181 or, or 1.9, there was so much delay and filtering on the PID controller and the gyro that it just, you you know, the best tuned copter you got wasn't particularly, quote unquote, locked in compared to what we have now. Um, what we have now, you know, if you're running Betaflight, for example, and let's just see what you are running. If you're running Betaflight or CleanFlight 1.12, uh, there's no reason you can't have a fairly locked in feeling and you're running Betaflight 261. So no problem there. Those firmwares have low enough latency, low enough filtering, and they just generally good enough that if they're tuned properly, you should get a, a very sharp and locked in feeling. So the number one thing that relates to the locked in feeling, if we assume that you're running something like Betaflight 261 or CleanFlight 1.12 uh, with, with the defaults, um, the number one thing that relates to that will be your P gain. The higher the P gain, the uh, more locked in the copter will feel. To, uh, up to the point where you start to get crazy oscillations, and then it'll be very locked in, uh, but also unflyable. Uh, I recommend that everybody out there do an experiment. Is you, t you take a copter that is tuned reasonably well, that you think flies reasonably well. Maybe you tuned it, or maybe somebody else tuned it for you, but whatever the P gain is at, let's say the P gain is at four, right? Take that P gain and start working it down, let's say in increments of 0.2. So you go from 4 to 3.8, and you fly a little bit. And you go from 3.8 to 3.6, and you fly a little bit. And keep going down until your P gain is noticeably soft, okay? You don't have to take it down to the point where the copter's like completely drunk and unflyable. But move it through the range of sharp to, oh, I see, yeah, it's soft. And if you make an analogy to like focusing a camera lens, right, there's sharp, and then there's uh, it doesn't look out of focus, but it's. Uh, I it was sharper a minute ago, but it, I wouldn't say it's out of focus. And then eventually you get to the point where you're like, oh no, that's just out of focus. And what I want you to recognize by doing this exercise is uh, the difference between a copter that's just definitely undertuned, like badly undertuned, and a copter that's just a little bit undertuned. And you'll you'll learn to feel that difference. Uh, by doing this exercise, uh, and that may be a copter that's just a little bit undertuned, may be completely flyable, but won't have that like super locked in feel. So let's uh, take a look back at your CLI dump, and let's just have a look at what your P gains are. Oh well, you're using MultiWeed two dot three, your pitch oh, twenty three and twenty three. So I unfortunately I can't confidently comment on this because. It's been so long since I tuned MultiWe 2.3. I, I just don't know what an expected sort of high or low P gain is. But so I'm going to have to defer on that uh, as tempted as I am to just make something up. I'm not sure whether that's high or low. It feels a little low because like I know that on rewrite, you know, you would be expecting something at least at like three. And on... Uh, on Lux float, well, the old Lux float, you know, you would be in the range of around two to three. So the fact that the multi, I think that multi, we used to be higher than Lux float for sure. And so the fact that 
on multi-wheel you're at 2.3 and that's roughly something like you might see on Lux float in the old days makes me wonder if that's in fact uh, too low but that's that's a very long chain of logic to get there and I wouldn't put too much confidence in it so then let's look at your black box and see what black box says and we'll start as always by looking at your gyros gyros look fine I can see that there's some activity on your yaw axis especially like right here where the yaw axis gets noisy this thickness in the line indicates that the yaw axis is getting noisy the yaw axis is always pretty noisy on this copter but it gets especially noisy here probably because you throttle up yeah okay that's what happened you throttled up the pitch and the roll axis are super clean it's normal to see the yaw axis be noisier than the other two axes that's just how vibration seems to tend to happen on these copters. Um, but your yaw axis, I think you might have a tuning issue because it doesn't look like a sort of a uniformly fat line. I can see some lower frequency stuff coming out. What I mean by that is if the noise is high frequency enough, the wave fronts get compressed together, if you will, to the point where on the screen it just looks like one 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 fat line whereas if it's lower frequency noise the wave fronts spread out to the point where you can see the individual little zigs and zags okay so i can assess the approximate frequency of the noise on the yaw axis by looking at the that characteristic of the line and high frequency noise is usually vibration but low frequency oscillation is usually a tuning thing uh, so that so it looks like your yaw axis, my first guess would be XSP gain, uh, which is usually what that is. We'll go ahead and we'll look at the yaw axis next and we'll see if I'm right about that. Okay, yeah, for sure. Um, so here, the red line is your P term, and you can see that it's constantly spiking, right? It's constantly spiking. Now, now that's normal to some degree. It's normal to see the yaw P line constantly moving up and down, but especially like in a situation like this, it's it's very excessive. Um, the magnitude is large. Whereas, let me see, yeah, here, not only is the magnitude large, but like, well, let me see. If you look here, we can see the P line sort of going up and down like a sawtooth. But as we get to like here, do you see how the frequency here is completely consistent? The spacing between the peaks, which is the frequency, it's completely consistent. And the peaks have smoothed out into an almost sinusoidal shape. Whereas over here, they're a little more irregular. So this is a hard P term oscillation. And that's a clear indication that that, that, that is overtuned. So your yaw P gain needs to come down. Now the main effect that this is gonna have is it's very unusual to see excess P gain on the yaw axis cause oscillation, visible oscillation anyway. And that's because on, on most of our quadcopters, the yaw axis doesn't have a huge amount of authority uh, compared to the pitch and roll axis anyway. So your yaw P term has to be really out of whack to get visible yaw oscillations because of excess P gain. Either that or you need to have a copter with like a really light copter with a very high power to weight ratio where the yaw axis does have enough authority to make that manifest. What usually happens though is that excess P gain on the yaw axis causes vibration in the copter which limits your ability to tune the other axes. So for example, if you have carefully tuned your pitch and your roll P gain, then you might have hit the oscillation point and not be able to go any higher. And the reason for that may be that the yaw P term is adding vibration into the copter, which is preventing your pitch and your roll P gain from being able to be raised any higher. That is a, that is a thing that could be happening. Let's take a look at your pitch and your roll. So, but the first thing to do though is you're gonna lower your yaw P gain and your yaw P gain is at 4.4. That's not that high. I mean, again, I don't know multi-wee as well as I know rewrite and Luxflow, but 
assuming that 4.4 is what it's at, then I would take it down to at least 4.0 and maybe, I think it feels like even more than that, but let's say 4.0 and see if that takes the edge off the oscillations. I could see it going as low as maybe 3.8 or 3.7. 3.5, my gut feel is that 3.5 would be too low, and you would start to notice some softness and some um, lack of precision in your turning. Uh, that's my gut feel. So I, would, I think I would take it down to 4.0. Pretty fair whack off the top. Just to, anytime you've got those strong oscillations like that, you probably want to take a fair whack off the top of your P game. So then we'll look at pitch and roll. I'm going to go to one of your high throttle scenarios. This looks fine. So notice that during your normal flight, there isn't a lot going on. Here's a, a fairly sharp turn. We don't, we see a little bit of sort of uh, destabilization in the turn. See how, see how the copter got a little unsettled there? It didn't look like a nice smooth turn. Now some of that may be your sticks. Let's watch your sticks carefully. No, see, it didn't look like that was your sticks. We'll watch it again slower. Now you pitch forward. Oh, I didn't go back far enough, sorry. Here you turn, you pitch back. Notice that the copter is not super responsive to your pitch back. You pitch back, but it doesn't look like the nose pitches back very much. Maybe it's because you're turning. It's an illusion. And then there's a little bit of bobble there at the end that is not... Let me watch, just watch your stick now. Left roll, pitch back, and center. Yeah, though you didn't do that at all. There's a little bit of bobble, especially on the pitch axis. Right there, there, yeah. The nose kind of comes up, but it doesn't look like it corresponds to what the sticks are doing. So... Uh, it's a relatively soft situation. Uh, the copter is not oscillating and vibrating hard, but it's sort of wallowing a little bit. Um, and the, that feels like undertuned P to me. I don't see any signs of strong oscillation. Here is a little bit of a vibration as you raise the throttle. But even at high throttle, we see these occasional peaks of noise coming through. But the P-term itself is very well behaved. It's not going into that sinusoidal strong oscillation. It's definitely getting active here. These sharp spikes like this are the D-term becoming very active. You might reduce your D-gain. I always say that until you are sure that you've got your P-gain really dialed in where it needs to be, don't start playing with your D-gain. And, and if your copter doesn't have a really nice sharp locked-in feel, then you probably haven't got your P-gain tuned tuned exactly right. Um, this didn't used to be the case if you go back far enough, but today, if you have, maybe I'm being a little bit uh, biased, if, if you have good ESCs for sure, if your copter is reasonably built, in other words, if you're flying a 750 gram uh, copter with Atmel ES, with, you know, uh, DYS SN20 ESCs, not XM, SN20 ESCs, the old, you know, Atmel version and etc. If you've got, if you've got that kind of lower end equipment, then possibly you'll need to tune a little sharper to, to get good performance, uh, out of the copter. But I think a lot of setups today, you know, very, very good equipment is within the range, within the reach of people, even people on a budget, you could get a, a 10 or $11 ESC that is very good these days. Uh, you know, obviously you can spend $20 on an ESC that's excellent, but even a, even a budget build these days can have some very good equipment on it. So I think a lot of builds these days, especially if you're running beta flight or clean flight 1.12, you can, you can get a very good tune with just pretty much P and I without having to raise D to, 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 D is just the last little sort of flourish on top of the tune. And so I, I think you should really focus on getting your copter flying very good with just P and I without raising D and maybe even with lowering D, you know, to get it out of the way. Uh, 
And then only when the copter is flying very good, do you then start to tune things like the last little bit of prop wash oscillation by adjusting D or the last little bit of bounce back at the end of a flipper roll. So in this case, what we see happening here is these, these little spikes coming out as you raise the throttle, like this little spike here. This is the D-term becoming active. A D-term amplifies noise in the system. That's the negative. The D-term does something helpful, which we won't talk about right this minute. But the negative thing the D-term does is it amplifies noise in the system. And we can see here that the D-term is amplifying the noise that's occurring as you, as you raise the throttle. And that's why these little spikes are coming out. And they, those spikes are imposing themselves on the P-term as the copter moves. So this may be an indication that D is on the, like right here, for example, this little ring right here, blah, blah, blah. That, uh, that could be an indication that D may be a little bit too high, especially since we know your P terms aren't perfectly locked in yet. I would, I would lower D. We'll take a look at your pitch axis as well. My guess is based on that sort of wallowing around that we saw that the P pitch is going to be low on P as well. But we can't judge because here again we see the D term is really active. The D term on pitch is, is definitely too high. On roll, we saw that when you raise the throttle, occasionally a little sort of breakthrough of D-term noise would come out. But here we see just a constant D-term activity. This, this right here is a clear sign of excess D-gain. This, this sh uh, sharp response, narrow, sharp back and forth in the D-term, and it's much larger than the P-term here on the, on the viewer trace. This is definitely D-gain is too high for your current setup. So here's what I would suggest. Your D is at 24 on roll and 37 on pitch. Let's just get that out of the way. Take those down to 15. Okay, maybe even 10. Okay, then start working on your P gain. And I think your P gain is low on pitch and roll. And do the thing that I, that I always say, raise P gain until you get to a point where you start to see oscillations. The place where oscillations will first come out is during sharp turns. So take your D gain down, like I suggested, and then don't change anything else and go out and get going really fast in one direction. And then as sharp as you can, whip the copter around 180 degrees and, do, and, and drop the throttle, whip the copter around and get the throttle back up again and feel how much oscillation you get with your P at 2.3, okay? And I'm serious, really work the throttle too. Snap it around 180 degrees and get the throttle back up again and go the other direction as fast as you can. Okay, maybe not like as fast as you can. Now, almost every copter, no matter how well-tuned, will oscillate in that situation. So if you do that, and at the moment when you snap the copter around and then jam the throttle back up again, your copter doesn't kind of go, Mmm. You know, I'm wiggling my hand here, but you can't see it. If it doesn't do that, you're definitely undertuned. Okay. So then start raising the P gain and you can raise it, raise it on both axes. But eventually, if you really want to fine tune, you'll sort of raise pitch and then raise roll and then raise pitch and then raise roll and feel out the, the oscillation point for both of them. And you want to really find that oscillation point. Um, the common guideline is find the oscillation point and then go to 65% of the oscillation point. But I, I'm kind of starting to think that it used to be that when you had P overtuned, if you just raise the throttle and do a straight punch out, you would get really strong oscillations. But I don't see that as much as I used to. And when you're using something like this aggressive snap 180 tur turn maneuver, I think you can really push right up against the oscillation point, almost right up against it because that move is so aggressive. Um, so I find that point and figure out where that number is. And I think when you get closer to that point, you'll have a much more sort of locked in feel. Uh, you may actually want to drop the P a little bit to get rid, to back off some of that oscillation. But the main, the main piece of advice I'd give you is that with your D gains low, work your pitch and your roll P gain up to, to find that oscillation point and feel if the copter is getting sharper. And then if it does feel sharper, then figure out what to do about those prop wash oscillations some other time. All right. Well, I hope that's helpful. And I've given you, a, a, I haven't really held back on this one or tried to end it early. So I hope that it uh, makes up for me uh, forgetting you during the live stream. I do apologize for that. And as always, happy flying.